Whoa, a ghost type video right around Halloween. How original. Cut me some slack. We're at minimum a year out from the next competitive Pokemon game. We're not quite scraping the bottom of the barrel, but I definitely gotta get my shoulder in there to reach anything. Ghost types. They're like, really good. Like, really, really good. Like, every generation, it seems that they get better and better for some reason. I'm not kidding. At minimum, since Generation 6, Game Freak has put enough freak juice into at least one ghost type to have it break a metagame in half. Yeah, it seems each gen we have at least one broken ghost type that the entire game exists within the context of, and we need to keep in mind whenever we build a team. Ghost types are naturally quite good, as they have the advantage of being not only immune to fake out and extreme speed, but they can't be trapped at all, and they have immunities to both normal and fighting moves, making them a super desirable typing. So today, I want to talk about the brief history of busted ghost types in modern competitive Pokemon. You might think this list is short, but believe me, it's going to be a lot longer than you realize. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. As a matter of fact, you should really just subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of content just like this that you can watch once this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because like a lot of my viewers actually aren't. With that, let's get into the video. Like I said, we're going to start with modern competitive Pokemon, meaning the 3D era. Of course, the first Pokemon on our naughty list Wait, sorry, wrong holiday. The first Pokemon on our spooky list has to be Aegislash. While on face value, this Pokemon doesn't have much going for it, but a great ghost steel typing and phenomenal defenses with admittedly low HP, it takes just a single turn for this thing to become a menace. You see, Aegislash's base 150 defense stats instantly become its attack stats if it uses any attack, thanks to its exclusive ability of stance change. With these absurd offenses, it can knock the lights out of any Pokemon instantly with a powerful Shadow Ball, then instantly switch back to being a bulky tank by clicking the move King Shield, which originally harshly dropped the attacker's attack stat if they made contact with it, which was obviously broken. So Game Freak took that back pretty quick the next gen and made it just a single attack drop. Beyond this deadly combo, Aegislash didn't ever really have to deal with the consequences of dropping its defenses to attack since it had a naturally pretty low speed stat, allowing for it to almost always go second, meaning you were usually hitting it on its base 150 defenses, but still getting smacked by base 150 attack. And you couldn't really follow up the next turn to hit it on its defenses since King Shield has the same priority as Protect, meaning it could toss up its brick wall defenses before anything actually hit it. Aegis was famous for this little dance it do where it would just alternate attacking and king shielding to always get the best of both worlds. It was eventually nerfed to have just 140 in its defenses, but the damage was done. At least it sucked in Gen 8 VGC since Max Guard didn't activate stance change. That's karma, you dork. I was celebrating the fall of Aegislash pretty hard. Speaking of fall, this video is sponsored by Marvel Strike Force. It's that time of the year when the leaves fall off the trees and it gets real cold outside, so instead of dealing with that cold, you can play Marvel Strike Force. Want to immerse yourself in the spirit of Halloween? Well, you can experience the spookiness of the season with Marvel Strike Force. Unlock heroes in the spirit of the season like Zombie Iron Man. After being infected with a mysterious zombifying virus, Tony Stark is now a shadow of his former self, who hungers for flesh and can inflict bleed on his enemies. You can take him and other Marvel heroes and villains into battle in this free-to-play mobile squad RPG, where you defend the universe against threats like Doctor Doom and Apocalypse. Recruit heroes from across the multiverse like Blade, Wolverine, Iron Man, and more. With your team, you can play different game modes like Campaigns, Blitz, The Arena, Raids, and more. There's even the Cosmic Crucible where you can go head-to-head -head with other players in a tournament. And if you're in my audience, I know you love your RPG tournaments. New players can unlock Agatha by logging in this month only. So what are you waiting for? Click my link in the description down below to download Marvel Strike Force and use the promo code HALLOWEEN to receive 100 shards for Zombie Iron Man, 600,000 gold, and 480 L2 training modules for free. Once again, click the link in the description to download Marvel Strike Force, where you can use the promo code HALLOWEEN to receive 100 shards for Zombie Iron Man, 600,000 gold, and 480 L2 training modules for free. And thanks again to Marvel Strike Force for sponsoring this video. While Aegis did get that nerf in Gen 7, we were still introduced to a new little menace with a broken ability in Alola. Mimikyu at face value isn't anything to write home about. Its stats are just alright and befitting of a strange little Pokemon that you find in a Walmart. But Walmart, its ability certainly is not. We've got that Ermi's Gucci, Louis Vitton ability on this Pokemon. The costume it's wearing costs more than your rent. The Z stone on its wrist costs more than your ring. You see, Mimikyu had the ability Disguise, which simply caused Mimikyu to not take any damage from the first move that went into it. And while this ability would later be changed to deal a small amount of damage to Mimikyu upon the Disguise breaking, this was not the case upon its initial release. Mimikyu was notorious for its reliability as a Trick Room Setter in competitive VGC and a Sword Stance Sweeper in singles. Any other Pokemon would kill to have a free turn on the field, and Mimikyu just got that by default. In VGC, you had to play the guessing game. You want to stop Trick Room? You got two options. You can taunt the Mimikyu and find out that it's actually holding a Mental Herb, or you can double into it with your two strongest attackers and find out it's holding a Focus Sash. 
Yeah, that nerf to make Disguise Breaking cause a little damage was specifically done to make sure Mimikyu never ever ran a Focus Sash in competitive again, because the only thing worse than one free turn is two. And with a great move pool including Trick Room, Swords Dance, Taunt, Will-O-Wisp, Play Rough, and Shadow Sneak, Mimikyu could really stretch that free turn further than any other Pokemon. I mean, take a look at the results from tournaments in 2017 and 2018. Mimikyu Snorlax teams were everywhere, and if your team didn't have an answer to it, you weren't expected to do well in a tournament. Even post nerfs in Gens 8 and 9, Mimikyu having a free turn has led to it remaining a top tier competitive staple in VGC, maintaining a healthy level of play. Where Mimikyu was busted because of its utility and ability, Game Freak really pushed the envelope in Generation 8 by asking the question, what if we made a ghost type that was like fast? Like really, really fast. Like the fastest non-legendary Pokemon people will actually use in matches. Then they made Dragapult. While ghost and dragon types are strong on their own, together they're a whole new beast. Dragapult offensively has nearly no resist to its stab, as ghost and dragon hit most things for neutral damage. Well, all except for its arch nemesis Wigglytuff, which it can literally not touch. Yeah, imagine being the face of a generation's competitive format, only to be walled by the giant wad of bubblegum from Gen 1. Go figure. But the point is, Dragapult was a pseudo-legendary Pokemon made with Dynamax in mind. Clearbody meant that not only was Dragapult immune to Intimidate drops, but none of its stats could be lowered by the opponent's max moves either. Dragapult could max Airstream boost without any fear of Icy Wind, Electrowave, or Max Strike slowing it down. This also, unfortunately, made it quite the popular Weakness Policy user. But to be fair, literally anything could run Weakness Policy in Dynamax. That's just one of the reasons the mechanic was so annoying. But despite Dragapult's impressive stats and ability, it also has quite possibly the best Dragon type move in the game today. Dragon Arts is a 50 base power physical Dragon move, which hits twice and doesn't make contact. This move in doubles will strike each target once. But not only does this move hit both opponents individually, bypassing wide guard, it also has smart targeting. This move will literally play the game for you at times. If one of the opposing Pokemon clicks Protect or is otherwise immune to Dragon Darts, no problem. Both of the darts will now go into the partner that can be hit that turn. It was even recently discovered that if Dragon Darts misses due to evasiveness, like Sand Veil or Bright Powder, it will check if the move is going to miss before selecting the target, and if it is going to miss that Pokemon, the dart will redirect into the other Pokemon twice. How crazy is that? Pokemon could make this move function first try, but Z Parting Shot crashed the game back in Gen 7. Okay, yeah, sounds about right. But Dragable isn't the only busted ghost type from Generation 8, since Game Freak decided to make yet another ghost type that hits like a truck and outspeeds literally everything by creating Calyrex Shadow Rider. A base 150 speed stat means that not only does it outrun Dragapult, but even Zacian Crowned, the previously most broken Pokemon in the game. Not only did this Pokemon boast Astral Barrage, a spread ghost move with 120 base power, but for every KO that it scored, its ability Grim Nay would have it gain a special attack boost, snowballing it and make it roll over anything its path. And since it outspeeds Zacian, it can click Dynamax to use Max Phantasm, drop the opponent's defenses, and then KO with its own partner Zacian. There's so much messed up about this Pokemon. It has its own video on my channel, but you can check that out later. But yeah, this dude remains stupid. But where Gen 8 brought us two ghost types at the top of the metagame, Gen 9 brought us not one, not two, but five new ghost types to fear. Yes, two of them are from Hisui, but they were only playable in PvP as of Gen 9, so I'm counting them here. Let's begin with Pokemon number 1000, Golden Go, which asks the question, what if Aegislash stacked paper to the ceiling and wrote on 24-inch chrome? Thus, we got this Golden God, and it has one of the most broken abilities ever in Good as Gold. What does Good as Gold do? Oh, nothing. It just makes the user immune to literally all status moves. Now, I know your average Pokemon player just wants to click Draco Meteor until the A button falls off their controller, but in a competitive environment, status moves are the name of the game. Golden Go is immune to Taunt, allowing it to protect and Nasty Plot without fear being stopped. It's immune to Thunder Wave, meaning its speed has to be lowered by other means. It's immune to Encore, meaning it can't be locked into its setup moves. And above all else, it's immune to every single possible way you could inflict sleep on it. This means Spore, this means Sleep Powder, and it even means Relic Song and Dire Claw because it's immune to both of those as a Ghost and Steel type. The only thing you're allowed to do to Golden Go is hit it, which you probably want to do anyways as to avoid its signature move of Make It Rain, a 120 base power special steel move which drops Golden Go's special attack stat by just one stage every time it uses it. Even with the 25% damage reduction from spread moves, that's the same as two 90 base power individual steel type attacks. That's better than two individual flash cannons. He just gets to do that for some reason. And he's among one of the more reasonable ghost types from this generation because we also got Annihilate, a ghost fighting type evolution to Primeape, which not only has phenomenal bulk and ability 
which makes it get stronger from being intimidated and literally perfect type coverage on its stab moves, but it has a signature move of Rage Fist. A 50 base power ghost type attack, which gains an additional 50 base power every time Annihilate is hit. Leading to self-target beat up strategies where Annihilate will have a partner hit it, giving it a ridiculous 250 base power ghost type move right off rip. And while that is a really strong strategy with this guy, it's not the only one, since Annihilate also has the privilege of being a 110 base HP ghost type with access to the move Final Gambit, which is a move that knocks out the user while dealing damage equivalent to their HP stat at the time of use to the target. Not a lot of Pokemon have higher HP than Annihilate, and with the ghost typing, you can't even fake it out. Scarf Annihilate basically just gets to take something down with it turn one. It's like a more aggressive destiny bond. Also, if you made it this far into the video, do me a favor and just comment down below messing with people who haven't made it this far. Like, choose any random ghost type in the game that probably isn't that good, like Galarian Corsola, and just pretend like I sold you on it being busted. I don't know. It, I like to mess with the comments sometimes. Just I like our little inside jokes. Okay. As annoying as Annihilate is, it's never been as meta-dominant as Fluttermane. Yet another Pokemon in this video that has another dedicated video on my channel explaining why it's so broken. But I'll just give you the spark notes here. Ghost? Fairy. Both of these types are very good. All of its stats that matter are very good. To the extent that you can really just spend EVs training it to patch up its bad stats in live hits that it really shouldn't be. It can run a lot of items. And it's won more tournaments in a single year of EGC than poor Blastoise ever will hope to in its life. Go watch the full video for more, but the last two busted Gen 9 ghosts aren't even from this generation, really, or even the time period, as they're actually from Pokemon Legends Arceus in the Hisui region. The first of these is Hisui and Typhlosion, which is effectively just a slower Typhlosion with the ghost type added on. And this ghost type is everything for this Pokemon. Typhlosion may have a base 100 speed stat and access to eruption, but Hisuian Typhlosion has a base 95 speed stat with access to eruption, and you can't flinch it. Bam, instant viability in Regulation H, moving on. Basque Legion, on the other hand, was granted the ability Adaptability to boost the power of its ghosts and water type moves, alongside the move Last Respects, which is a 50 base power move, which gains an additional 50 base power for every fainted party member, meaning that in singles, it can reach a maximum of 300 base power, and in doubles, it can reach 200 base power. These are doubled to 600 and 400 base power, respectively, due to Adaptability. Yeah, this dude can reverse sweep like no one's business, especially with the Choice Scarf item. And it's due to this that it's currently a top tier in Regulation H. If you want a metric as to how busted these Gen 9 ghosts are, Annihilate, Fluttermane, and the very move Last Respects were all banned at one point from Smogon OU, and Golden Go is an extremely high tier Pokemon in that format. As for VGC, it takes just one look at usage stats to see that ghost types from this gen make the world go round. It's no wonder Game Freak introduced a ton of great normal types to try to balance this out, including one which can hit ghosts with normal moves for some reason. But this is just a brief overview of the power creep from modern ghost type Pokemon, and why they continue to dominate the competitive landscape. If I missed any ghost type you think I should have talked about, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean the world to me. If you want to support me further, you can check out my Patreon page, or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos, and even some bonus content. You'll also see your name at the end of my videos, like all these other people. Special thanks to my most boosted supporters, Ant Media UK, Avatar67, and Kayla Thompson for the generous pledges. Another way to support me is to check out all these videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. I also have a second channel where I talk about the current VGC metagame trends and a Twitch channel where I stream, both of which will be in the description. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.